I learned from my counterparts that the freedom fighters were appearing all over the country. Those who joined did it of their own free will. So did I and my brothers. The freedom fighters had a common goal to repel the Soviet occupation, so Lithuania would become free and independent again. We were the true Lithuanian army with military units and a strict partisan code. Out of nearly 3 million inhabitants, around 50,000 took up arms and another 100,000 provided support. The Soviets stationed around 60 to 70,000 Red Army troops to fight us. So many parents saw their young sons and daughters leaving to fight for freedom and never coming back. I lost my brothers too. We got less support from weakened villagers. Lithuania was virtually cut off from the outside world. So I set up an underground printing press to fight the spreading Soviet propaganda. And later, my close friend and I broke through the Iron Curtain into Poland to connect with the exile resistance supporters. We came back, though with not fully accomplished goals. We broke out for the second time through Poland and to Sweden. There I met with the exile resistance supporters who put us in contact with the French intelligence. It trained us with the exiles teams to infiltrate the occupied territories. But once I was in Paris, my life was never going to be the same. I met Niola. He used to call Lithuania his first wife and me his second wife. He was living a very lonely life. You could feel that he was suffering very much because he felt that he had to return. But he could not find a way for it. For three years, one week after our wedding, he was taken by the US intelligence on a mission to go back to Lithuania. And although Juazas did not live to see it, because of him and many others who resisted, Lithuania had a chance to become a modern, democratic state that is recognized and supported in the world today.